Hello, I'm Tracy Williams. Welcome to this program, Living Safely, Preventing Accidents and Injuries in Indigenous Communities. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are three times more likely to die from accident and injury than other Australians. And rates are almost twice as high for Indigenous people living in rural and remote areas. The relatively high rates of preventable accidents and injury can be attributed to a range of factors, including social disadvantage, poor living conditions and overcrowding, unsafe roads, lack of information on safety standards, alcohol and substance use, as well as interpersonal violence. In this program, we'll look at how a number of different communities are working collaboratively to tackle these issues, to find solutions and produce positive outcomes. First, let's hear from Sarah McEwen, District Medical Officer in the Emergency Department of Port Hedland Hospital in Western Australia. We see a wide variety of accidents and injuries in Port Hedland Hospital. Uh, a lot of those unfortunately are alcohol related accidents and injuries. The variety that I do see involve things like domestic violence, um, self-harm issues. We see a lot of motor vehicle accidents and boating accidents for that matter. There are a lot of um, support networks and a lot of funding that have been involved to try and reduce those numbers and a lot of um, public health awareness programs that are out there to try and you know, um, bring about a, an awareness of the issue. I'm not sure whether that's actually meeting the target group that, that it needs to meet and that's something that we need to work on both as practitioners and as public health awareness people and, and you know, community at large. We all need to work together to try and improve the uptake of those, those resources and the public, you know, public message that needs to get out there. Sarah, like many health professionals in emergency departments, is dealing with the end results. She believes we need good safety awareness and promotion and also highlights the alcohol factor in many accidents and injuries. In Alice Springs, the People's Alcohol Action Coalition is dealing proactively with the issue of alcohol supply and pricing, as Dr John Boffer explains. In Aboriginal communities, um, it's said that 70% of all homicides are alcohol caused. Domestic violence is in the territory here, it's more than 80% alcohol caused. Child neglect, it's the principal cause of child neglect. The most popular strategy and we've had it over the years is alcohol education, but it makes no difference to consumption. Whereas what does work is reducing alcohol supply and principal amongst that is affecting the price of alcohol then reducing the total takeaway training hours is the next most important thing. And third is changing the type of outlets. When we had the restrictions that came into being in 2006, that led to a 20% drop in alcohol consumption over the next two years. Serious harm went down by 20%. Homicides and manslaughters declined from an average of around 10 a year down to three. It's incredibly important that we treat sick people and make them well in all sorts of ways and that's in, that includes people who have addictions. They need high quality treatment and in the modern era that includes access to pharmacotherapies from GPs, access to psychotherapy, particularly cognitive behaviour therapy from psychologists and access to social support to help people find housing accommodation, reconnect with sober networks to aid recovery. Health professionals and health services have a particular role to play because they're seen to have a certain legitimacy and it's incredibly important that we speak out on the key issues when we need to. Alcohol supply reduction is only part of the picture, but health services can play a key role in prevention, early intervention and treatment. The Central Australian Aboriginal Congress delivers 15 different programs to address the needs of local communities. A number of these programs are designed to address both the environmental and social factors behind the high rates of accident and injury, as well as some of their immediate causes. We deliver what we call um, comprehensive primary health care um, under Aboriginal community control. In terms of accident and injury prevention, I guess the programs we deliver take a much broader social um, and environmental approach, which deals with the individual, the child and the family unit across a number of um, services. The Family Nurse Partnership Program is one of those programs where it spends from the birth of the child to two years. 
working with the mother in the home and it plays a role in identifying those type of risk areas where injury um, and safety will come up. Are you aware of any specific issues in her home? Oh, maybe just the um, power plugs for the switches. Yeah, yeah the, the Australian Nurse Family Partnership Program is a non-clinical program, which means we don't do any checkups, we don't do any antenatal care, we don't look into any kids' ears or give out Panadol, none of that. It's, it's all around education and support. When a client gets referred to us, the Aboriginal community workers will go out and talk to the client and tell them about the program and find out whether they're interested to join because it's a voluntary program. Well, uh, this is Sarah, the nurse um, visitor, and I'm Marie, the ACW. We sort of know if we can, we can come and sit down with you and talk to you about safety in the house for baby. And then if the client decides to sign up, we make it very clear that it's quite a commitment because we work with clients for two and a half years. I've got a few things in the box here that we can have a look at. Um, a few different things that you can use to help keep baby safe. Safety and accident prevention is a very big part of that domain that we cover. So, so we will talk about first aid and water safety and poisoning and safe equipment around the home. So these you plug into your PowerPoints so that the baby can't stick sharp shiny things into the PowerPoint and electrocute herself. One exercise that we do with clients is called have you crawled around your house lately? So we try to get parents down on their knees and crawl around their house to just see what kind of safety concerns there could be for their child. Targeted Family Support is probably another really important program that deals in secondary prevention. So it's predominantly dealing with families that are um, in social need and social crisis. There's conflict with mum and the primary school at the moment. And we have a program that has social workers working in teams with Aboriginal Family Support Workers. So it's a combination again of ensuring social worker um, knowledge as well as community local knowledge. A juatra. And what does that mean? That means they went through the law together. Part of the yeah. important aspect of building a relationship is that people have um, someone to talk to in their own language. So we have a mix of workers who pretty much we've covered all of the Central Australian languages between our Aboriginal workers. We really couldn't do the work without having a very well-grounded understanding of the cultural issues. We provide Nginja, which is a male health specific program. Nginja came about in the last seven years as men expressing concerns around their health. It also is where the violence intervention program's housed. And we're able to refer families internally down to Nginja where they go and get male specific access to the psychologist down there in relation to um, violent behaviour. So in terms of your um the anger side of things, because I know that that has been tricky for you occasions, hasn't it? And then a struggle. <laughs> we do see individuals mainly, but um, we also see uh, family members, partners, um, because the violence happens I in a broader context. Stop the Violence program is a program that we've developed to try and come to grips with the high level of violence in this area, especially from men. But we have found over the years that a lot of the women are becoming more and more violent. So it's not a men only program. We wanted it to, to be seen as a community issue and a community problem and come up with a community solution. So we came up with the slogan and said, stop the violence, which is using the red sign. Stop is universal, everyone knows the stop sign. We had ads on TV and t-shirts and street marches and radio programs. We wanted to empower community members to go back to their own places where they live, which are sometimes a long way away from Alice Springs and pass a message on that we don't want our kids to grow up seeing violence and, and pass it on to their kids. So we want to stop. The power of having a one-stop shop of all the services available at a point of families needing them, that's been one of the um, highlights, I guess, of why we call our service a comprehensive primary health care program. The Congress has an holistic big picture approach and is really tackling the environmental and social issues that underlie Indigenous health and safety.
Each Indigenous community has its own specific accident and injury issues. In the Gulf in Northern Australia, it may be water and boating difficulties, or in others, such as on the Ananu Pichinjara Yunkanjara APY lands in South Australia, road accidents and burns are major concerns. The Julian Burton Burns Trust assists the APY communities to improve public awareness through a special Indigenous Burns Prevention Education Awareness Program, as Sasha Pitchigan explains. The Julian Burton Burns Trust runs a burn prevention education program, so that's about um, addressing safety around the campfire, safety around traditional cooking, safety within the home. As the coordinator of the program, I attend community safety meetings, uh, find out what the needs of the communities are, what worries are going on in the community. We've done after school programs, worked with other organisations that run school holiday programs and tried to do all of our program delivery outside of school hours. That encourages kids to stay in school as well and it's a positive reinforcement when they come out that they'll have something to do and they won't be bored. <laughs> For many Indigenous Australians living in remote communities, exposure to things we take for granted, such as road signs and traffic, are not common. Previously, few people actually obtained driving licences, but drove anyway, resulting in continuing fines, convictions and more accidents. And if alcohol and bad roads are put into the mix, injury and often death are the outcome. In Amata, in the APY lands in South Australia, Indigenous people recognised the need for preventative action in their communities. The Community Safety Committee is working collaboratively with different authorities, such as the South Australian Police and the Education Department, to identify and address their major concerns, like burns, road accidents, driver education and obtaining a driver's licence. Armada officially has a population of about 450. This is the centre of uh, the community. You've got the community store, the PYQ building from which uh, a number of government services are provided. We perform a, obviously a policing role in the community. We're also trying to develop some proactive activities. Uh, this year we're focusing primarily working with the school. Uh, our focus has been road safety. I guess the main reason that we've started these programs uh, is because of the, the number of deaths uh, that have occurred in the lands through people not wearing seat belts, including the death of a young child who was ejected from a vehicle uh, when it rolled over. And I felt it just couldn't sit by and, and ignore that and needed to take some positive action. The ultimate aim of the community safety committee and the community safety meetings is eventually to have the whole community take responsibility for safety and, and well-being within the community. It's a forum for members of the community to identify issues that are of concern to them, both for us to deal with from a policing perspective, but also that we can encourage and help them to develop the skills to deal with issues before it becomes a policing issue. We're going to sit and talk together here. Piranpa, I'm saying white, and a marrow. Together. Chum, help. Help one another, okay? Yes, excellent. Okay. Yes. I'll throw it open to people, any other issues that uh, they want to raise. Uh, we'll start with Jan and, and work around the room, I guess. The main thing that um, was raised as a concern to me by one of the builders, who was the number of kids who were hanging around the heavy um, earth moving equipment, and they've got one of the guys yeah. was really quite concerned because he almost ran one of the kids over. That's Some of them are going pretty fast, yeah. Yeah. they need to yeah. slow down. Maybe that needs something that needs to be mentioned, Jan, with um, with the kids at the assembly and also maybe the community council elders might just mention that with the kids. The safety committee in Armature is a really important group and our involvement as a school is really critical. In our community there are many things that can become 
and safety issues. There's a, a huge building program going on at the moment, so helping kids to understand about their safety is really important. What do you reckon the first thing we have to know about riding our bikes is? What, what do you reckon the first thing is? Hey, that's a good. Uh, the police contacted us about um, developing a program and we've worked with them over the last five or six weeks. We're endeavouring to teach the kids about stop signs, roundabouts, crossings and give way signs. A lot, a lot of the things that they don't encounter in Armata every day. Who can tell me what this sign says? Give away. Give away. Give away. And what do you think it means then? Stay away. No. Anyone else? Right. A lot of the students here do go and visit family in places like Alice Springs and Port Augusta for example and the traffic conditions there are much different. It's much faster traffic, it's much bigger traffic. Our experience uh, in the past has been that many of the young men, once they've been through the first stage of men's business, haven't been returning to school. They're regarded as adults within the community and the culture. We've started a program in conjunction with the school run by uh, Stuart, the Watties class. The aim behind that is to equip them to uh, sit for their learner's permit as soon as they're eligible. This fella, he wants to go over here and this fella wants to... The Watties program has brought them back to school to build on their education, their learning. Blue has to give away. We're teaching them the learner's theory so that then as soon as they become eligible they can get their driver's licence and drive legally on the roads. Unlicensed uh, drivers is seen to be a significant contributor to um, road accidents so we're trying to minimise uh, risk to themselves, uh, risk to other road users. When car roll over, they die, finish. We're going to have safety, everything there, licence. Have to lock. get that license. That's the number one, safety. Put your seat belts on. Check your mirrors, seat position. One of um, our focuses is to increase the number of people that have uh, licenses that are driving uh, vehicles. No one coming from behind? Indicate. Where you go. With a license or whilst driving, they're not restricted to just the communities. People are driving to Alice Springs, to Adelaide. There's nothing to stop them from driving in, in, uh, in Sydney, in the traffic over there. Um, so we're trying to equip them with the knowledge of the road rules and the skills necessary to drive in those environments. So as you're driving along, keep a lookout for, for kids, for dogs. Very good. Lots of houses, a lot of people, a lot of kids today. And we should be a slick up hmm. and say something, you know. We're not a kid, we are a man and a woman, and we can say something, fix him up properly. we got to fix him up, not the policeman. Yes. i got to fix him up first, <laughs> and afterward, police. See? That's safety. Yes, definitely. That's safety. Yes. Very important in Amata today. Let's go from those specific issues in Armata to Sherberg in Queensland, where one community is successfully addressing a wide range of potential accident, injury and health challenges through the Injury Prevention and Safety Awareness Project. Hi everyone, you're tuned to Asmob Radio 94.1 FM. Are you a big chance, going to take your cruise in right about five o'clock. And yeah, just going to have a bit of fun, so hang on. Our voice, your choice. Have a nice day. Sherbrooke is situated at about three hours north of Brisbane, uh, one hour west of Gympie. It's the third largest indigenous community, I believe, in Queensland, possibly Australia. Population roughly fluctuates from about a thousand to two thousand but the culture itself is fairly urbanised. My position, it's titled Community Safety Injury Prevention. It's actually a health promotion. For example, say the rubbish. If we've got rubbish around here, it's not going to be a very clean place to live, which can cause disease and things alike. So how do you prevent that? Sherbrooke has never had any fixed public rubbish bins. We've purchased six of those as well as 
before that was already given to us. As part of the project as well, we've got a brand new truck. People are adhering to the two days pickup. We are going to implement a third day for recyclables. The building that you see behind me, it's the site for the, the new recycling plant. It's been cleared out on the inside, ready for installation of our new belts, hopper and baler. There used to be a fairly high number of dogs, but the number has been halved due to the fact that the animal management plan was introduced by the council. As part of our injury prevention project, uh, we've addressed uh, an issue to deal with livestock. And we had a problem with cattle uh, wandering around the community. So with animals defecating, that can create disease and sores through cuts and infections and stuff like that. So we assisted and supported a, a project to fence the Sherberg community. So there's a, there's a brand new fence that's been erected. So it was a sort of a, a, a ripple effect where we, we identified a problem, we addressed it through a fence, but also created employment and training and upskilling as well. I suppose our job is to prevent people from getting to the hospital. I mean, it's not going to be a 100% strike rate, but we do our best when we look at what are the determinants of health that, that cause that. In my role as community safety coordinator, I have the opportunity, well, hey, the community's identified this. Today was a, a classic example. Uh, I received a phone call from the uh, deputy principal from the Sherbrooke State Primary School. Well, we've got a few issues here regarding uh, traffic around the front of our school. As you can see here, all these cars are parked here. Cars coming from that direction, they can't see these kids until they're just about on them. Uh, we had a near miss just last week. I can try to act on these as, as soon as possible because it, it's, it's, an, it's, it's an issue. It's a serious Definitely. issue. Road signs in Sherbrooke community were far and few between. We've since had zebra crossings installed and speed signs and give way signs. You know, we're just a community just like any other community that has road rules. We're no exception. The community has taken injury prevention as a concept and moved it over to a safety promotion concept which is more proactive and empowering of the community. Health promotion looks at why the accident happened and why that wound came into being on that individual. Here you go babe, all done. Thank you. That's okay, just keep your shoes on. Hey? Mm. One of the strategies that uh, we've developed here is collecting injury data for the community. When I come to Sherberg, Andrew and I go and visit with a range of stakeholders such as the council, the hospital or the school. Just so we'd drop in and uh, see how you're going with the injury collection forms. And probably the last three weeks my glass and feet have picked up again actually. And have you found most of the injuries have been on school grounds or they've been outside of school grounds? Ah, uh, both. Does it feel like it's rubbing inside? And our injury forms are very specific. They gather the nature of the injury, where the injury occurred, whether there was any protective equipment being worn at the time. So that is very important for us to know. The data we are collecting here in Sherberg on injury prevention and injury presentations at both the hospital and the school is a first for Queensland, if not the nation. Having the local person with the local knowledge, the local networks, is vital not just for injury prevention or safety promotion, but any proposal where you choose to work with an Indigenous community. It's at their pace, at their time of choosing, and based on their priorities. This is a health promotion position, so this allowed me to, I suppose, spread my wings and uh, experiment and uh, try new things and uh, think outside the box and, um, and really get involved in networking and creating projects and communicating with people in all different organisations. And to date, um, I, I just love my job. A very comprehensive approach in Sherberg and, as we've seen, cultural sensitivity, community ownership and collaboration are some of the key elements in preventing accidents and injury in Indigenous communities. These things have to be in place if we want to close the gap on life expectancy and to have safer and more productive communities. We can then help our people to live safely.